Hello Year 2 Agents, a slightly different mission for you today. I'm going to start on Tuesdays from now on reading you chapters of some of my favourite books that I think you might enjoy in Year 2. Uh, I'm hoping that these will give you a flavour of certain books and you might then decide to carry on reading them by yourselves or with your family members. Some of these books are perfect for you if you're a confident reader to read on your own. Others you might want to read as a family and have mum and dad read to you, um, talk about the characters and really get into the excitement of these chapter books. So. As you know, one of my favourite series of chapter books for year two is the Mr. Gum series. We finished uh, the first Mr. Gum book and some of us were there when we started the second Mr. Gum book, but some of us missed it. So I thought I would reread chapter one of Mr. Gum and the Biscuit Billionaire for you. Uh, these books are available at libraries um, when libraries reopen if you want to carry on reading it or you can uh, purchase it on Amazon Kindle at the moment for just 2 99 I think the second hand versions on Amazon as well that can be delivered to you. So if this is the kind of book that in inspires you um, it's worth a look you can buy the full series on Amazon as well but this is Mr Gum and the Biscuit Billionaire chapter one on Boasters Hill it all started late one afternoon in the peaceful little town of Lamonic Biver summer was almost at an end and the days stretched out long and lazy like a huge glossy panther made of time the birds chirped in the trees the rabbits chirped in their burrows and a fox walked along the railway tracks whistling green sleeves and thinking fondly of a vixen that he'd once loved. Up on Boaster's Hill, a little girl sat reading a book called Cobbler Wins the Prizes. Now this little girl's name was Polly and she was the sort of girl that you could be friends with. She was brilliant at running and jumping and scabbing up her knees and she didn't have no time for nonsense, okay? She was brave and honest and true and when she laughed the sunlight went splashing off her pretty teeth like diamonds in search of adventure. But where were the laughter and diamondy teeth now? Nowhere, because Polly was bored. Oh, Cobbler wins the prizes full of escapades, but that's just a book, she complained to herself. Nothing exciting never happens round here, and that whopper of a dog Jake never even comes round to play no more. For alas, it was true. Polly hadn't seen Big Jake all summer long. Oh, how she missed riding on his huge furry back and pretending he was a horse or a spaceship. Jakey, she called hopefully, in case he happened to be nearby playing cards with a dormouse or something. But there was no answering woof to be heard. Sigh, sighed Polly with a sigh. First no adventures and now no Jakey. It's well unfair. And with that she lay back in the long grass, the hot sun beating down, and soon she was drifting, drifting away. When Polly awoke it was dusk and the afternoon had grown fat with shadows. A low breeze whispered secrets in the bushes and the light was all funny and golden and full of magic and mystery and moths. What strangery is this? whispered Polly. Her hair was standing on end and her arms were covered in goosebumps. It felt like something was going to happen. And then, sure enough, something did happen. A little figure appeared over the top of Boaster's Hill. It was the strangest little man that Polly had ever pointed her eyes at. I mean, for a start, he was only 15.24 centimetres tall, and he was made entirely out of gingerbread with raisins for eyes. And he had electric muscles so that he could walk around like you or me. Blue sparks came off him whenever he moved. And what's more, he carried an enormous biscuit tin, and it was stuffed full of money. And as you know, money is worth a lot of money. And there was an awful lot of money in that tin, that's a fact. Hello, said the little weirdy, skipping over to where Polly was sat. I'm Alan Taylor. I'm Polly, replied Polly in wonder. Are you from fairy tale dreamland where the rivers run with lemonade and the streets are paved with unicorns? Please don't make fun of me, said Alan Taylor. Haven't you ever seen a gingerbread man with electric muscles before? Sorry, I haven't, replied Polly in embarrassment. I'm only nine and I didn't mean to make no fun. Well, all right, replied the talkative biscuit. Here, take some of my money so we can be friends, he continued, offering her a bundle of banknotes. Why, I don't need your riches, said Polly in astonishment. I'll be your friend anyway. That's not how the world works, said Alan Taylor sadly, stuffing the money back into the tin. But do come to my party tomorrow, he said cheering up. I've just moved into town and built a massive mansion on top of this very hill. Look, it's massive, so I can impress people and get friends. It's massive! Polly looked up, and there it stood, a gleaming and a glittering in a blaze of floodlights. Rimloff, she exclaimed. Oh, it's big enough for a king, or two little kings. They could share it and play hide and seek. But it's all mine, <laughs> laughed Alan Taylor. 
I am so rich, I am so rich, he sang, dancing around in the grass and throwing banknotes at a passing aphid. Do you like me, Polly? Do you want some money? I just told you, said Polly firmly. That is not what friendship is all about. Oh, of course it is, replied Alan Taylor with a frown. But listen, come round tomorrow afternoon before the party starts, and I'll show you my house and I'll impress you that way instead. Well, the truth was, Polly did want to see inside that marvellous house, and she liked Alan Taylor, even though he seemed a bit confused about money and friendship. So she thanked him graciously, and then she tried to curtsy, but she didn't know how, so she just wiggled her arms up and down and shouted, Curtsy! And hoped that would do. Um, good try, said Alan Taylor generously. Well, I'd better get going. There's lots more people to invite and impress. And off he raced on his crunchy little legs, leaving Polly too excited for words. So she said some numbers instead. Twelve, nine, three hundred and fourteen, she said as she made her way back home. And soon she was in bed, dreaming of gingerbread men and parties and all manner of wonderful things. Now, you know I like these books. I like them because they're a bit silly and I think the characters are funny and it's all a bit strange. I also think these are particularly good books if you are just starting out on chapter books because they are nice short chapters and they're easy to listen to and you can follow the story really easily. So this is my recommendation this week and I hope you enjoyed this first chapter.